once you're seated and you're comfortable, just roll your shoulders back a few times. Just saying hello to our shoulders. And then roll them forward a few times. And we're going to start dropping into the breath. Roll the shoulders back. Leave your shoulders back. And soften your eyes as you come into the focus on the breath, sitting up nice and tall. Just being aware that you're breathing in and that you're breathing out. We'll take this about six times. Inhale, sweep the arms over your head, reach up to the sky. And exhale, draw the hands down to the heart center. Inhale, sweeping wide and up over the head. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhaling, sweep up, stretch the fingers, lengthening the side body. And exhale, ground into your center line. A couple more times. Inhaling as you sweep up, big breath into the whole body. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart center. Keeping the hands at the heart center once they're there. Press the hands a little bit more into each other and draw the shoulder blades onto the back. So start to lengthen the breath. We're just going to stay for another moment. Lengthening the breath for two, three, four counts as you breathe in. And same as you breathe out. Inhaling a longer breath, two, three, four counts as you breathe in. And same as you breathe out. Keep pressing the hands into each other. Shoulder blades are moving towards the spine behind you. And then let's try this Ganesh Mudra. You're going to have your, it doesn't really matter which hand, but I'm just going to say hands, okay? So right hand is palm facing out. Left hand, palm is facing you. And then interlock your fingers. And then pull as if you could split your hands apart. So you've created a little lock with your hands. That's it. And you're just going to have this resistance pulling outwards. And as you do this, relax your shoulders. It doesn't have to be a lot of effort, just enough so you can feel the pull, the resistance. And still feeling the shoulder blades drawing onto the back. Come back to counting of the breath while you're holding this hand position, this mudra. Counting the length of your inhale and the length of your exhale. Ganesha mudra, removal of obstacles. So as we hold this, we have some pretty obvious obstacles in our lives at this moment. But not only looking at what is an external obstacle, but an internal obstacle. In what ways may we be standing in our own way from growing, evolving, maturing more into our full potential? In what ways do we block ourselves that we can remove to have more of a sense of confidence, adaptability, possibility? Switch which palm is, in, is facing you and which palm is facing away. Interlock the hands and let's just hold it for another couple moments. And it's okay if your arms are getting tired. Okay, just see if you can stay with it. And of course, you have to relax them, relax them. But otherwise, see if you can hold it just for another moment. 
feel that the the work of the arms here that it's a safe work although they may get exhausted it's possible to maintain your capability to remove the obstacles those ones that we create that stand in our own way and through the practice over this hour noticing where our mental self the thinking mind maybe gets in the way and also where it's helpful to keep us open and present to this moment and let's relax the hands into the lap and take a couple of breaths here Okay, and then let's come into tabletop. So as we come to the hands and the knees, spreading through your fingers and extending back one leg at a time. So you get a little push through the heel, which opens up the knee and the foot and then back to the other side. Just a couple of little pumps back and forth from one leg to the other. Okay, letting that open up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Good, and then let me know in a chat box if, if you need anything from me, if you have any difficulties. Downward facing dog, paddle through the legs, bend one leg and straighten the other. Bending one leg and straightening the other. Let your neck hang, let your jaw relax. We worked on that a lot on the Sunday class of or sorry, the Monday, I think it was, of relaxing the neck, not hiding the head like a turtle in a shell. You know, let it lengthen and drop downward. And then come back to the table, to the hands and the knees. Open on the inhale, open the chest, the gaze and the hips. And exhale as you curl, look to the navel, push all the air out. Inhaling, soften the chest, open the chest, the gaze, the hips, and exhaling, curling it in. Push the floor away, empty the air. One more time, shoulders on the back, inhale to open, and exhaling to close. Child's pose, sit back to the heels, forehead to the floor. Ujjayi breath, hearing the sound of your breath as you breathe in and out. If you make the breath a little more audible by narrowing in the throat, it will help to lengthen the breath, which helps us to stay more focused on what we're doing and not letting the fluctuations of the mind aggravate or disturb the breath. And then come to Sphinx Pose. Come onto the forearms and onto the thighs. So I'm going to lift the navel in and up a little bit, pulling back on the elbows to let your chest move forward. Sphinx. So there's an isometric action going on here, pulling back on the elbows. Draw the navel up to the spine, which pushes your pubic bone maybe a little bit more into the floor. I feel the chest lengthening, the rib cage lengthening. And then stack the hands under the forehead, rest, and windshield wipers, bend your legs. Let your feet fall from right to left. Conscious breathing. If we spend this whole hour with conscious breathing, it will go with us through the rest of the day. You can remember it at any time and how it felt to consciously breathe, how it feels in your body, in your mind, and in your emotional self, tabletop. As you come up to table, the ear and the hip are gonna swing to the right, squeezing the side body. And then ear and hips squeeze towards the left, making a half moon shape. And one more time each side, ear and hip towards each other to the right. And ear and hip to the left. Good. Come back to the center. Downward facing dog. Lifting up. Bend and straighten. Paddle again through the legs. Let the head hang. And relax the jaw. 
and relax the tongue. The tip of the tongue can touch behind the upper teeth, but the rest of the tongue drops down, so you're not pressing the whole tongue to the palate. And then let's bring the feet to the hands, come into a standing forward fold, bend your knees, grab your opposite elbow, and hang. Shake your head, any adjustments you need to make, whether that's using um, a chair so you're more in an L position instead of a hanging position. Okay, whatever feels best for your back today. Nod your head yes, up and down, and shake your head no, side to side. And then drop your arms, and as you press with your feet, push yourself up to a standing position. Good. Mm -hmm. And then interlace the hands and turn the palms to the sky. Inhale. Hands to the heart. Exhale. Interlace with the other thumb on top. Palms to the sky. Inhale. Hands to the heart. Exhale. Arms up, reach up, gaze up, inhale. Squeeze your legs inward as you fold, exhale if you need to, bend the knees. Drop your head, shake it again. Deep breath. Good, and let's step the left leg back and right foot forward, low lunge, left leg back. Lean on the fingertips and open the chest. So just make it really nice and gentle to begin. The saying hello to the inner thighs, the hip creases. And then straighten the back leg. Now squeeze your legs tight towards the midline. Right arm to the sky if the right leg is forward. Turning the gaze out or all the way up, move the shoulders onto the back. And release the hand down, plank pose. Step it back, lengthen through the crown of the head and out through the heels. Good, and then lower yourself down, might be knees first or one piece. Take a low cobra, keeping your elbows bent. So letting the body pull through and maybe sway a little bit. So I'm looking for more space and softness through the back, the low back. And then downward facing dog, exhale, lift the hips up and back. Bend and straighten in the downward facing dog. Take a deep breath, and left foot forward, low lunge. First on the fingertips, low lunge, drop the back knee, lean forward, and bring your attention to the hips. And then straighten the back leg and squeeze your legs to the midline. Twisting, take the left arm up to the sky. Both shoulder blades onto the back. Looking out or up, find the even flow of the breath. Release it, downward facing dog, exhale. Bend and straighten the legs, pedaling back and forth. Lengthen, look forward, come up to the hands halfway up. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, and squeeze your legs inward and fold on the exhale, drop the head. Squeeze your legs to stand up, arms to the sky, coming up as it feels good for your back, and then bring the hands to the heart center. Reaching up, grab the left wrist over your head, side bend to your right, and bending your knees if you need to. That'll make it easier on the low back. Reach up, grab the right wrist, side bend to the left. And inhale up, turn the palms to face each other, gaze up. Diving forward, exhale if you need to, bend the knees, drop the head. Shake your head again, relax, remind it to soften. Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, open the chest and lean forward. Exhaling, plank pose, the push-up position. Lengthen through the crown. Lower yourself down. Cobra, loop the shoulders, pull the chest through. 
Downward facing dog. Good. Exhale. Hips up and back. Let's lift the heels as you inhale. Both of them up. As you exhale, lower the heels any amount. Inhale, lift the heels, lift the sitting bones. Keep lifting the sitting bones, lower the heels. Exhale. Lift the heels, lift the hips. Inhale. Lower the heels, keep the hips up. Exhale. Lift the heels up. Lift your right leg to the sky. Stay there. Pushing to the heel, lifting to your inner thigh. And take a big step forward. Crescent lunge, bring your hands up and bring your body up, arms to the sky. Good. Drawing the front ribs to the back ribs. Feel a sensation in your hips, in your thighs. Feel the breath in the torso, in the rib cage. Feel the stretch to your fingertips. The evenness of your breath. And release your hands down. Step back, plank pose. Lowering down, cobra. Move your shoulders on your back. Downward facing dog, exhale. Lift your heels up high. Lift your left leg up. Flex those left toes straight down. We're going to be holding each posture for just a few extra moments so you have time to feel where you are, feel the breath in the body, feel very awake in the sensations in the body so you're aware of what's happening. Bring the foot forward, crescent lunge, taking the arms up to the sky. Squeeze your legs towards the midline, so extending through the back leg. Breathe behind yourself, breathe in your back. Relaxing the size of the neck, the jaw, the tongue, and release the hands down, downward facing dog, exhale. Take another breath, and at the end of the exhale, bring your feet to your hands. Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold, lightly touch the shins or the floor. And then fold on the exhale and drop your head. Squeeze your legs together to stand up. Take your arms up over your head. And bring the hands to the heart. Bring the right knee up towards the chest. Hold onto the right thigh or shin. Draw the navel to the spine and the shoulders on the back. Eyes on one spot. Now that you're here, find your balance, find your breath. Even inhale to exhale. Release the leg down and switch your sides. So you can hold the leg if you like, drawing the leg in a little closer as you grab onto it. Navel towards the spine, lifting through the pelvic floor. So just keep conscious breath as you're doing a body scan. You know, feeling where your body is at from the bottom foot to the top of the head. And then release the leg. Sit into Utkatasana, sit into your chair and stretch upward with the arms. Stay a couple of breaths. In this pose now, close your eyes. Feel your feet. Feel the muscles of your legs. Feel the hip creases. Feel the length of your torso with your breath. Feel the softness in the shoulders as you reach to your fingers and the ease in your face. Eyes open, forward fold. Halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Squeeze your legs together, half forward fold, and release. 
Step it back in a plank pose, walk your feet back, either one piece down or knees down, and then the rest of the body. Cobra, pull the shoulders through, squeeze your shoulder blades on your back. Downward facing dog, exhale. Right leg to the sky, inhale. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Lower the back knee. So your hands are inside of the foot. Stay right here if you already feel this is a hip opener. Bring your left forearm to the floor or to a block or something to work as a block. Even a chair could be nice and then or both forearms down. Now open your chest and gaze a little forward on the floor. And again, let's close the eyes so that you can feel the posture. Feel the squeeze of your legs inward. Feel the big toe ball mount of the right foot pressing into the floor. Feel the openness of your heart. Shoulder blades drawing onto the back. Evenness of breath. Good, eyes open, come back up onto the hands, move the prop. We're gonna move to warrior two. So I'm gonna move my right foot back in, straighten the back leg, root the back foot. Now maybe you come into warrior two keeping the bend of the front leg or maybe you need to come out and then go back in. Okay, <laughs> that was to offer more challenge. So the front thigh parallel to the floor, warrior two. Back leg, pressing that foot down. Once you find your posture, close your eyes. Again, immediately with the breath, move into the feet. Feel the four corners of the feet. When we ground ourselves more through our feet, it'll help ground our energy, which is very, um, you know, <laughs> lost in the wind during this time. Feel the pelvis. Feel the expanse of the breath in the rib cage. As your shoulders drop, your fingers reach. The top of the head floats. Eyes open, windmill the arms back down to the floor. Step back into downward facing dog, exhale. Plank pose, inhale. Child's, or er, um, <laughs> cobra. Take it down and lift it up. Downward facing dog, exhale. Left leg in the air, inhale. Step the left foot outside of the left hand. Lower the back knee. So right here, you're on your hands. This might be good. Bring your right forearm to the floor or to a prop that raises the floor for you. Maybe bring both forearms down. Okay, soften the shoulders onto your back to open your chest. And close the eyes. Breathe into your hips. Feel your left big toe ball mount pressing very hard into the floor. That will hug the whole left leg into the side of the body. Feel the breath expand the chest so you're not hiding the heart. Feel the softness in your face. Eyes open, bring your hands back up, move the prop, warrior two. So as you set up warrior two, if you wanna make it extra challenging, get the front leg bent low, bring your torso up without changing. Okay, and then bring the arms out to the sides. Looking for, to be able to see the big toe inside of the left knee. And then once you feel settled, close the eyes. Feel your feet. The wide, grounded, even inner and outer foot. Feel the split of your legs. As your left leg bends, your right leg resists. So it widens. That's how we get the hip opening. Feel the tailbone gently descending downwards. And the breath with ease in the whole rib cage. We call that whole body breathing. 
breathing in all sides of the rib cage. Soft in the shoulders, but reach to the fingertips. Head is floating. Eyes are open, bring the hands back down. Downward facing dog, exhale. Take a deep breath. Bring your feet to your hands, forward fold at the top of your mat. Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up, lightly touch the shins or the floor, opening the heart, and fold, drop your head. Utkatasana, sit down into your chair pose and stretch the arms upward. Mm -hmm. Breathe into your back. Feel the four corners of your feet and stand up and bring the hands to the heart. Okay, so let's hug the right knee back in towards the chest. We're going to add the twist with the balance. So if you need your, you know, the wall or something for a hand, left hand goes to the outside of the right thigh. Right arm reaches back for the twist. Feel the flexion of your right foot. You're twisting from your back, not your pelvis. Look for the light spaciousness on top so that your pelvis and your legs can hold you while your body finds more rotation, more twist. Looking forward, bring the hands to the heart, push the leg out straight. And then, yeah, hands switch sides. Always good to just try it. <laughs> okay, let's bring the left leg up. It gets better. <laughs> I always said that I used to take classes with these modern dancers in Chicago and their leg was way up here. And I was like, someday, you know, but it's not way up there, but I can hold it so much better just by trying. <laughs> okay. Left leg is up, so we're on the other side. Finding your balance first. Right hand outside of the left thigh. Look back with the left arm behind you so you're twisting. And if you struggle with this pose, a really great way to practice this pose at home is to put your foot actually on a chair, <laughs> okay? Because you'll ground that hip and then you'll start to find more rotation. And then you might play with taking your foot off of the chair, but you know you still have the chair there if you start to feel wobbly. So that's a great way to train this pose. And since we are practicing in our homes, you can start adding in a prop like that to practice some of these more challenging balances. Hands to the heart, look forward, push the leg out straight, and then let it go. That's it, yeah, just give it a try. And then shake your legs out. Separate your feet as wide as the mat. Interlace the hands behind the back. Open your chest, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. If you need to, bend your knees. Widen through your toes. Squeeze your shoulder blades on your back. Open your chest. Great pose for closing the eyes. Feel your body from your toes to your top of your head. Check in, what are you doing? How does it feel? How does it change? How does your breath help you in the posture so that our breath can help us in our daily life? It's when we're most upset or disturbed that it's really hard for the ego to remember calm breath or focus on how you feel in your body. But this is where we train when we're feeling good. <laughs> to work on those things. Hands come to the low back and hands come to the floor. Turn your feet out so you're in a wide angle squat and bring the hands either to the heart or release your hands on the floor. Okay, whichever one is going to feel okay for you. <clears throat> if you need to sit on a prop, that's a good time for it. Okay, sitting on it. And we'll take just a couple more breaths. So again, we're bringing more attention to the hip creases. <clears throat> and widen your legs, not just with your arms, but with deep lateral rotators. Who takes your knees out more? 
Okay, there's muscles way underneath the glutes that are activating to widen your legs. So don't just rely on the arms to do it. Take two more breaths. Okay, release yourself to a seated position. And let's take boat. <clears throat> so a, a little more abdominal work here. Lift your shins parallel to the floor and squeeze your knees together. Lift your chest. Draw the navel towards the spine. So you're going to have to breathe in your rib cage now instead of your belly. Arms are forward. Chest is lifted for one. Here or straight legs. Two. Three. Smiling helps. Four. And five. Release your legs. Soles of the feet together. Knees drop open. Badukhanasan. With your hands behind you, drive the knees down towards the floor. That is the same muscles you just used in the squat to widen the legs. Two more breaths here. Driving the knees down, sitting up tall. Good. One more time, boat. Lifting the shins, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, spread through the toes, knees together. Arms forward, lift the chest, bend or straight legs, one. Breathing, two. Three. Notice where the mind goes, where the thinking mind goes, four. And five. <clears throat> Soles the feet together, Baddha Konasan. Fingertips behind you, sit up tall. Push your legs into each other and drive the knees down. And in the practice on the mat, it's a good time to just smile at those things that arrive. You know, those um, thoughts that come up. Like Pama Chodron says, you're inviting them to the table for tea. Okay. No big deal. <clears throat> Cross your legs, come back into plank pose. It's when we try to push things away that they resist. Yeah. Come to plank. Lengthen through the crown. And either knees down first or one piece to the floor. Cobra, open up the chest. Pull the chest through. We use this as an opportunity. How do we feel after doing some other poses? Downward facing dog. Exhale. So now you can lift your right leg in the air and open it <clears throat> and bend the top leg, heel to the hip. Soft shoulders. Squeeze your heel towards your butt. Re-extend the leg. Turn it back to parallel and take a big step forward with the right foot <clears throat> and turn out the back foot triangle pose. So you can do it from low by straightening the right leg, trikonasana, or you can come upright, organize the hips, get the tilt of the hips, and bring the hand to the shin, the block, or the floor. Okay. So triangle pose, trikonasana. Ground big toe ball mount. Lengthen through the underside of your body. And can we close the eyes? So wherever you want to put your head so that your neck is comfortable while we hold the pose with the eyes closed. Right away, get to the feet, get to the root. Spread your roots into the earth. Engage the muscles, the quadriceps of the legs, the calves. <clears throat> Feel the tilt of the pelvis, which intensifies the hamstring stretch. And lengthen your spine all the way out the top of the head in this triangle pose. Feel the stretch across the chest line, opening your arms, stretching to those top fingertips. And then eyes open, turn it back down, or take pyramid pose. So the back foot needs to come in just enough so that both feet are rooted on the floor. <clears throat> Fingertips to blocks or the floor. Or books, you know, whatever you're using for props. Lengthening the body over the legs. So here in pyramid pose, the hips are more square. I shortened my stance because I want to get the back heel down. My back foot is on about a 30 degree turnout. And now with the fingertips just barely touching the floor, start to squeeze your legs towards each other. As if your legs could, your feet could drag to each other on the mat. Feel the posture. Feel the chest being open, shoulder blades on the back. 
and then gently release the pose, downward facing dog, exhale. So left leg to the sky, open it and bend it, heel to the hip. Make sure the lower leg, the knee and the toes are still facing forward. Pin that top leg in, heel to the butt. Re-extend the leg, turn it back through parallel, big step forward, and we're going into triangle pose, trikonasana. So you can come up to do it. If you want to try it from below, ground the back foot, and then straighten the front leg. If you need to come up to set up the pose, do what you need to do. Hand to the shin, the block, or the floor. Mm -hmm. Good. And while you're finding all these aspects of the posture, get your shoulders on your back. That lower shoulder is always forgotten. Okay, there's so much turn upward that the shoulder hunches forward. So we got to remember to pull that back too. And then find a happy place for your neck and your head as you close your eyes. And right away, feel your feet, four corners of the feet, strong through the quadriceps, front of the thighs, tilt of the hips so the inner thigh and the hamstring are getting big stretch. Let your breath grow your spine longer, creating more space as it lengthens out the head. Feel the chest line opening, so that means both of your shoulders need to come on your back. Extending through the top fingertips. And as you lower your hand, eyes open, pyramid pose. So step in a little and turn in the back foot a little. Hands can be on the blocks. You can even have your hands on a chair out in front of you or a tabletop. With some weight in your fingers, you can then drag your feet closer to each other. So again, a good home practice is that you have maybe a chair you can use that's higher, like I have this ledge in the room, right, which would get my body higher, and then I can really work the length of the spine and the length of the legs. So this is a good way for home practice to use what you have in the house to give yourself more length when you can't make it so much to the floor or if it bothers the low back. Okay, one more breath. And we step it back into plank pose. Plank. Lowering down, cobra. Loop the shoulders and open your chest. Downward facing dog as you're ready. Hips up and back. Neck soft. Check in, how does the body feel? Okay, we're gonna step the right foot forward, returning to low lunge. Okay, right foot forward, hands on the thigh. Okay, so we'll do a little shoulder opening while we're here. Arms to the sky. For the um, health of the hips, I'm gonna squeeze my legs towards each other. Okay, that's an action that, it, that main, is maintained. Interlace the hands except for the first fingers, and then bring them behind the head. Kind of like you were doing like a headstand, right? So the arms are just tucked in behind. Yep, squeeze your elbows in at the sides of your head. Mm -hmm. So you touch your head with your arms. And then nudge your head into the arms and lean forward a little bit more. Keep squeezing your legs towards each other. So I'm looking for a little bit more of a back bend. Lift the heart. That's it. Can you extend your arms behind your ears? Straighten your arms. Reach straight arms. And then bring the hands down. <laughs> okay. Turn out the front foot and knee open so it's wide take a little lunge twist look over the right shoulder navel to the spine this fills up the back body instead of sinking okay that's maintained stay there or reach back and catch the back foot with your right hand and bring the heel to the hip I'm still really drawing the navel to the spine and I'm trying to pin the heel towards the butt if you can bend the leg if not keep it on the floor you can always come down on the left forearm as another variation. Gently release the pose. Turn it back into the center. Take it back, downward facing dog. Exhale. Deep breath. Left leg to the sky. Bring the foot forward, low lunge. So we're taking the other side. It's also called Anjaneyasana, where we're going here. 
arms reach up. So drag your legs towards each other so it's more active. Bend the arms as you interlace your hands, except for the first fingers. Pin your arms in you know, to the sides of the head. That's it. And then push your head into the arms. Lift your chest. Find a little back bend. So imagine you have a sling around your upper back and it's picking you up to the sky. It's holding you up. Try to extend your arms behind your ears and then bring the hands down. Okay, turn out the front foot and knee. We do the lunge twist. Look over the left shoulder, navel to the spine. Surrender into your back. You know, move your shoulders into your back. Let it be open in the chest. So we don't fight so much in the shoulders. If you're good, bend the back leg, bringing the left hand to the back foot. Heel in towards the butt. Navel towards the spine. And if your, your right arm is still straight, just bend it just a little bit. It's like a secret bend, 5% bend, so that you're not hyperextending the elbow. And then you can focus your shoulder blades more on your back. Take another breath. Gently release the pose. Downward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Plank pose, inhale. Exhale, cobra, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good. Two more breaths in the downward facing dog. Whole body breathing. Feel your hands and feel your feet. Okay, um, let's come all the way down onto the back. Lie down on your back. Do a couple different other things here. So once you're on your back, let's lift the legs up into the air. So interlace your thumbs and reach your arms over your head. Now I'm not gonna drop my arms all the way to the floor unless my shoulders feel open enough but I wanna keep my ribs glued to the ground. That is important, okay? Right leg is gonna go away towards the floor, away from your face, and then lift the leg back up. So the breath is exhale, lower the left leg away, and inhale, lift the leg up. Now you're gonna keep doing that with the breath. Keep switching sides. And then things to think about is that the leg only goes down as far as you can maintain your ribs glued to the floor. Okay, that's not your low back, that's your ribs. So like lower ribs, middle ribs. They stay glued to the floor while you let the legs move. So that movement may be much smaller and that's okay. It'll be more useful. Okay, one more each side. With the breath. Again, notice where the mind goes. I ask you that on these abdominal exercises. <laughs> and then bring your knees into your chest. Bring your head up. Squeeze into a little ball. Release your head down. And <clears throat> take your feet down as wide as the mat. Windshield wipers. Let your feet fall from one side to the other. Now I'll recommend that if you have anything, it can be a stack of blankets, it can be a block, a block would be great, or some books, okay. Something to place under your hips. Now if you don't have that at all, okay, if you can't make that happen right at this moment, you're gonna take bridge pose with the uh, arms underneath you and you're gonna have to work to keep your hips up in the air. If you have something to sit on, on your sacrum, place it underneath your butt, okay? So that you can sit on it, and now we're in supported bridge. So you gotta get creative if you don't have a block, okay? It can be some blankets, which just offer you like a, you know, I don't know, five, eight inches of um, height. Okay, and then from here, again, you're gonna have to work a lot harder if you don't have a block under you. You're gonna lift your right leg up into the air, 
You can do this with no bluff. You just take breaks when you need to. Okay, obviously you're going to be working harder. But if you can sit on something, puff your chest and push out through the heel, spread your toes, take a look at that foot while you're breathing, that you're spreading the toes and working the leg. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades underneath you. The leg is going to come down and you're going to stay on the support. You may have to come down and rest if you don't have a prop underneath you. Otherwise, we get to hang out. Two more breaths. So if you don't have a prop, lift your hips back up and we'll take the left leg up into the air. Flex the foot <clears throat> and spread through the toes. Squeeze your shoulder blades together underneath you. You want to maintain this big opening in your back, in your upper back, by squeezing the blades together and opening your chest. Conscious breath. And then release the leg down again. Rest on your, ba on your back or on your hips if you don't have a prop underneath you. Obviously, if you don't have a prop, you can't lift both legs at the same time, <laughs> okay? So if you don't have a prop, you're going to repeat one leg in the air, and I'll tell you when to switch. Otherwise, if you are sitting on something, keep sitting on it and take both legs into the air and spread your toes, okay? So if you're on one leg, hold it up. If you're sitting on something, both legs up, big arch of the back, spreading to the toes. We're going to stay here, but if you are unsupported by a prop, you're going to lower down and rest. If you're sitting on the prop, you're still there, seeing if you can continue to work, squeezing the legs, spreading the toes. We're getting an inversion here and a little back bend. If you have no prop underneath you, lift your hips again. Now take your other leg, your left leg, into the air. And breathe. You might want to close your eyes so that you can again feel what you're doing and feel your breath and the posture. Just like that mudra at the beginning, your legs might be getting tired up in the air. That's okay. Stay a little longer. If it's not pain, then just experience the work, the effort, and breathe in ease. If you have no prop, come down and rest. If you're on the prop, three more breaths. Keep spreading your toes. Keep working your legs. Don't give up. All of those feet down to the floor. Take whatever prop you have out from underneath. Rest on your back. Feet as wide as the mat. Windshield wipers. Again, let them rock from one side to the other. Nice deep breath. Okay, and then either roll to your side to sit up or rock up into a seated position. Okay, so um, two options here. We're going to work Agni Stambhasana, which is to take the left leg on top of the right leg where your shins and feet are stacked. And then we'll look for a forward fold. Other options, if that's not going to work out for today, is to take half the pose by straightening the lower leg and having just the top leg in the floor. Leaning forward, use a strap or something if that's useful, or just hands to the floor, open chest. Okay, and third option is to bend the lower leg. Your left leg is still in the floor. I'm on the fingertips so that I can push my chest closer to my leg. This is going to be more directly a hip, outer hip stretch, but if you have issues with your knee, it might not like it. Okay, which is why this one leg straight and one leg in the four 
might be more manageable. And having a prop underneath the knee could be good if your leg doesn't like hanging in space. Okay, it also supports the knee joint then. So staying a little bit longer, I'm gonna remind you what the first option was, which was to stack the feet and the shins, especially the front, the top ankle, try not to let it sickle and drop in. That's gonna to start to become risky on your ankle and your knee. And then you're folding any amount forward. It's still letting the shoulders move on the back. Wherever we are, let's close the eyes. And inhale to lift up, shake your legs out as you switch sides. Okay, so whatever you did on the other side, try it on this side. So now my left leg is lower, my right leg is on top. Agni Stambhasana, stacking the feet and the shins over each other as I fold forward. The other variation was lower leg straight, folding forward. The last variation was Lower leg bent. I'm on the fingertips to not exhaust the wrists, pushing the chest towards the shin. That's a big hello right into the outer hip. Okay, wherever you're at, close your eyes. Feel the posture. Don't give up on the flexion of the feet. Offer yourself attention with your inhale, ease with your exhale. Inhale to come up, shake your legs out. Let's set up for our Shavasana. So any props you need. Here's another nice time for a chair, the couch, the bed, <laughs> that if you'd like to have your legs on a right angle, you kick your calves over that um, prop <laughs> so that that angle becomes very relaxing for your low back and your psoas. It is a psoas release position, main hip flexor, but you need to do it on something. Yeah, so put your calves on the chair on the bed or on a couch. Otherwise, extend your legs out. Any props that feel good for you to make it cozy, roll the shoulders underneath with your palms facing up. And once you feel comfortable, return to closing the eyes. And now letting go of control over the breath, but keep attention to your breath, okay? Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In and out. Breathing in, I notice my in-breath has become deep. Breathing out, I notice my out-breath has become slow. Deep. Slow. Breathing in, I calm my body and my mind. 
Breathing out, I ease everything. Calm. Ease. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release all my worries and anxieties. Smile. Release. Breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I know this is a wonderful moment. Present moment. Wonderful moment. in and out, deep and slow. Calm and ease. Smile, release, present moment, wonderful moment. Inhaling through the nose, maybe exhaling out the mouth, and let your head turn from side to side. Move your hands and your feet, maybe flex, make fists and open, closing and opening the fingers and toes. And when you're ready, bring your knees to your, and your body to your side and bring yourself up to a seated position. And take your time. When you're seated, bring the hands to the heart Anjali Mudra. And as we bow the chin to the chest, thank yourself for your presence for your breath. May all beings in all worlds find happiness and peace. Namaste.